Hello, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music. Welcome. In this video, uh, I'm trying a new setup. I'm trying a new camera system because uh, I want to up the production value a little bit on this channel and I will eventually get like proper lights. Right now, I just have this screen shooting white all over my <laughs> shooting white all over my face. That's a great way to start this video. Let's let's find it. Let's find the video. Let's get it. Uh, we lost it. Now we're back. So this video is about um, what libraries are ideal for creating kind of psychotic, thrillery, horror-y kind of stuff. And I think that a lot of people's minds gravitate toward, you know, a few of the kind of obvious uh, usual suspects because um, it's very easy to think of, of, of horror creation in terms of just like, you know, pads and drones and all the rest of it. I think for developers of those libraries, it's not easy to make those, although it is kind of easier, but it's harder to make stuff that is lead focused, melody focused. How do you create something that can follow a character on screen, move around with them, that isn't just some pad or drone that's detuned and whatever. So I've taken that into consideration for the criteria of libraries that are really, really well and lend themselves uh, to kind of like creature, monster, horror construction and sound design for for composing. So I'm going to leave links to everything that I'm talking about in the description. Uh, don't fret. Go there. Also, I've talked about some of these libraries before in um in different uh, videos. So you can go back and check those out if you want like a more in-depth discussion, but I'll be talking about them, ranking them, and then playing a little bit from the library itself so you can get acquainted with it. And let's just jump in to number one. Number one for me is a library um, put up by Native Instruments a little while ago called Thrill. If you don't know about this library, the way it works is you have basically an XY pad uh, into which you can control two different sound sources, the kind of intensity or loudness, you know, up or down. It's very intuitive, very accessible. It makes you want to dive in and play with it and move around and all the rest of it. Um, when it was initially released, it had a lot of sound sources and then it got an update, uh, which included 90 more sound sources and a bunch of new kind of ballistics and ways of playing with the library and stuff like that. It's super deep, accessible, it sounds awesome, and it's got one foot in a kind of spooky sound design world and another foot in the orchestral world because a lot of those sound sources are orchestral and I believe there's even some percussion stuff that you can do with it it's been a little while since I played with it but I have um I hold it in super high regard um, and I was even in touch with the developers a little while ago and I did a, a review and then a first impressions not in that order the other way around and they were super responsive and, and just you know they just gave me like a really good impression of the company because they were showing me new new things to do with it and things I hadn't thought of before and anyway um it's a fantastic library and it's good for the thing I was mentioning earlier which is just lead lead melody um, I guess construction very easy to do the pad thing, thrill, they totally nail it. And it's also not just for um, creating atmospheric stuff or composing for media. It's good for live as well. I was doing a play a little while ago where we had a haunted house scene. I didn't have thrill at the time, but with, with thrill, you can use it in a live context because you can drag your finger on that pad and maybe follow or um, just align yourself with what's happening on stage. And if something spooky happens, you can, you know, bring your finger up and it gets more intense and scary and then bring it back down to kind of, um, restrict the action a bit more. Uh, so it's got applications both in post-production live, um, super versatile tool. Have a listen. I'm going to play a little bit so you can get familiar with the library.
Okay, so the next library that I think you should know about for spooky sound design, thrillery, media construction, I'm just making up all these words as I go, is Sonic Couture's Haunted Spaces. So this is another library that I reviewed a little while ago, but it's 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 still one that I use constantly. Um, it is, uh, what can you say about Sonic Couture? This is a company where if everyone is going left they go right if everyone is going up they go down you know company x releases yet another friggin string library company y releases you know another kind of weird percussion library and then you have sonic couture that's like here's a broken piano that we recorded through a toaster that sounds amazing and it sounds weird and wonderful but it also makes you feel like oh now i have the edge now i have this tool that no one else has although a lot of people have it now but um I just, I, I love the company. They're always doing something original and insane. And this library, Haunted Spaces, that I want to kind of make you hip to is no exception. It is um, great for the kind of drone pad stuff, but it's also great for lead stuff as well. A lot of great patches and they have a lot of rhythmic effects that you can use in that library. So they have an arpeggiator, which I think they call the jammer and they've incorporated that into the architecture of haunted spaces. And it works really, really well. The way it works, it's kind of similar to uh, Thrill in that you've got different sound sources. I think you've got four in haunted spaces and you've got this terrifying little cube that dances around the different sound spaces very elegantly um, and you can change the sound sources of course and all of the sound sources were recorded or maybe not all but most I'm probably gonna get this wrong by a dude named Chris Watson I'm probably I think it's Watson is his last name for sure but he's um, a famous field recorder um, and all the sound sources come from like you know abandoned caves or you know the hull of a ship to you know some sort of sunset in Iceland he's just holding up his you know, super directional microphone at the sun and you get an amazing sound. And they brought all those sources into haunted spaces um, and into a really cool, fun, uh, you know, um, UI and, the, and the, the user experience is a lot of fun too. So I'll play a little bit of that as well uh, so you can get acquainted with that library. Okay, so the last library that I think you should know about, and it's these are no in no way ranked, you know, best to worst or whatever, just the last one that I thought of, um, is LCO by Spitfire Audio. So London Contemporary Orchestra is the name of this library because I think that that's after you know the the group or the uh, the off print or the people uh, that recorded it. Um, just very kind of atonal and spooky and weird, but also very, uh, I didn't see it coming from Spitfire. And I think that's why I like it so much. With Spitfire, there's a kind of tone and consistency and voice to their sample libraries. And this is one where it was just like the articulations were off the wall, something from like a nightmare. Um, but it's so playable, which is what I love. 
Um, if you want to just do droney patty stuff, you can do it with LCO. But if you want to do lead creation, melody creation with it too, it's very sinewy and it just works really, really well for that too. Uh, the interface is consistent with the rest of the interfaces and stuff from the library. So it's very consistent there. It's contact, blah, 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 like all the other ones are, but it just has a tone and a sound to it that we that you know we just don't get from any other company really i think um and certainly didn't expect it from spitfire um and i'll play a little bit of that for you now again just to show it off a little bit So as I'm thinking of, you know, three libraries and I was going to end the video here, I think one that you definitely have to know about more of an honorable mention is another one by Native Instruments called Kinetic Toys. It's just it's this wackadoo interface, but the sound sources are amazing and the effects that they put them through also just lend themselves really well to spooky, haunted, creepy stuff. Um, I'll play a little bit of it for you too. I did a, rev I think I did a review. I did an honorable mention of this library a while ago. Um, it's just really good for twisted, disturbing stuff. It it shouldn't be thought of that way because I think it's it's it also has potential to be really bright and and happy and kind of fun and kind of good natured. But there's a dark side of it as well that I think would be um, a must have if you're trying to like build a gentleman's library of like really creepy sound libraries to use. So I'll play a little bit of, of, of kinetic toys. The interface is a little wacky and stuff, but once you get used to it, um, it's very inviting and makes you want to, you know. Uh, tweak stuff and change stuff and it's very playful so have a listen to that kinetic toys <laughs> Okay, 
Thank you very much for watching. Those are my picks for top creepy, weird, wackadoo sound effect libraries, sound libraries, sample libraries. I don't even know anymore. They're just like tools to use. So if you have something that you think is even better or something that I didn't even think about and you want me to know about it, leave it in the comments. What do you think of my choices? Do you think they're good or bad, whatever? Uh, let me know. I don't care. Just good or bad. Let me know in the comments. Um, I feel it's a foregone conclusion now, but like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing on the channel. Does anyone ever, does anyone ever like actually subscribe after you, as someone says subscribe? I have no idea. So I'm probably going to stop saying it. It's just so reflexive now. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, happy Halloween and uh, take care. Hope you have a good one. Bye.